Good weekend. Welcome to Leading Edge. I'm Jerry Anderson. Power tends to corrupt. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. Those words from a British historian jumped into my mind this week when we learned that the Speaker of the Ohio House, Larry Householder, remember that name, and four political operative, uh, operatives around him were arrested and accused of running what's thought to be the largest bribery ring in the history of Ohio government. Joining me as we begin, State Senator Teresa Fetter. She's been in elected office for some 20 years, and she did serve over in the Ohio House, I believe, when Larry Householder was speaker before. And Senator, welcome in. Um, having covered this whole failed bailout of failed and bankrupt nuclear facilities, when this story broke this week, and this saddens me, it, it, it didn't surprise me at all. And I read where Representative Craig Rydell, I believe his name, out of Defiance, said, I quote, it was blatantly clear what was going on, that a deal was made, end quote. How could lawmakers not see that? And what's your reaction to these damning ac accusations? And they are accusations at this point. Senator? Yes, well, very sad day for Ohio. I think that um, everyone just felt sad. Um, and Ohio citizens are shocked and appalled but maybe not surprised. I mean, the alleged corruption has reached the highest level of the state house now twice. Uh, Speaker Rosenberger, he's never been charged, but there've been, you know, issues there. So now in a short period of time, we've had two speakers of the house who have gotten into trouble. And this whole House Bill 6 with First Energy just really sickens me when you find out the details of what the FBI is now revealing in these allegations. And, you know, everyone deserves their day in court yep. and the presumption of innocence until proven guilty. However, out of respect for the office, um, we are calling on the speaker to step down. Uh, there's just so much that needs to be done, and we certainly can't fix this, which I believe we need a repeal. And the governor finally agreed with the Democrats. We need to repeal House Bill 6 and get this right. Okay, we're, no, wait, a move wait a minute. Hang on a second. Where did you... Didn't, didn't you... Did you vote for House Bill 6? I did. You were struggling with it. I think you told me you decided the day of the vote. It was that it, close for you. On the House, on the Senate floor. I mean, we've, we've had um, so many issues with concerns about jobs, um, the environment, local communities, school taxes, and for goodness sakes, we want a balanced renewable energy plan for Ohio. And we didn't see those changes until the very last committee meeting in the Senate. All right, this would be, so a be lot clear. of work was done, but not until that time. So um, very hard decision. Um, but now that we know the details of how this bill was rolled out from the beginning, even years before, it, it's the right thing to do to repeal this. Okay, you've anticipated my question. Should House Bill 6 be repealed? You're saying yes. And really, how can any of us as electric rate payers be forced to ante up on this surcharge under a bill that federal agents say was illegally bought and sold? Now, you voted for it. You've told why the job thing. Did you receive any money from Householder or any of his Generation Now nonprofit shell company? It, it's alleged shell company. Did you take any money? No. Right. And I've not taken any money from First Energy either. Okay. And, so, and some who did are now calling for the resignation of uh, of um, speaker householder do you expect more charges lawmakers maybe first energy solutions reps i do and i think it's going to have a long life as they're you know unwinding this house bill six and how it happened from beginning to end um and this is solely indicative of um corruption that happens when there's no balance of power. When one party holds a supermajority, you lose sight of compromise and accountability. And that's what I've seen over and over and over with the charter school laws, um, you know, well, all of these things that have really caused us to not move Ohio forward. And I'm just wanting to say that, you know, we're 50th in the nation with infant mortality. We were 50th in the nation of providing state funds for children's services. We, we rank 
on the very low rung of so many things that now it makes me wonder, you know, is they're so focused on their friends in these deals, they're not taking care of the business for Ohioans to make things better. Uh, um, well, and, and I could argue, you talk about one party rule in Toledo, Ohio, our city council has had one party rule and we have four people up here facing federal bribery charges as well. I mean, I think this thing can cut across all political lines, uh, this, the, you know, whether it's greed or lust for power. That goes to, to somebody's morality and their makeup, not to their political party, for Pete's sake. Um, I totally agree with that. That's why we need a balance of a two-party system so we can have okay. that compromise and accountability. So your your comment um, in the beginning is very relevant. Um, well, I'll have something to say about that coming up as well mm -hmm. as to where that, where that comment came from. So you mentioned, I'm going to do this. I didn't know I was going to. I'm going to reach up on this wall right here. I'm very proud of this. This came from the Ohio House of Representatives. This is way to go, Jerry, on getting into the Ohio Hall of Fame. Um, Teresa Gavron, my state representative at that time, and signed by, you know what that says? Rosenberger. And you made reference to the fact um, that last we saw Cliff Rosenberger, he was talking his tail leaving Columbus after the feds had raided his dwelling. No charges. But again, it was the same suspicion pay to play and i've got to ask how dirty is the ohio legislature this sounds like a culture i think it's a culture of corruption because we don't have campaign finance laws that really you know address you know the the limits of money um the other things that i think states have done that we could replicate um, to make it easier for elected officials who are running for office. Think about this. The people own the post office. Why don't we as candidates get a break on the postage? People own the airwaves. You know, we don't get a break on radio stations or TV stations. We get charged the most to try to represent our republic for the people. So until you have a balance of not needing these huge amounts of money just to run an election, as you know, that's a tough dis consideration when you're thinking about running for office. That is a, one of the need major to take a break considerations. Here. Need to take a break here. Senator Teresa Fetter, my guest on Leading Edge, uh, she's paying uh, to be on this show the exact same thing she paid last time and every time, which is? Nothing. Nothing, that's right. We want to get it all out there. I need to take a break. And I got a couple of other things to ask you about. Can you hang? Sure. I'll be right back.